Gary Myers with us, well-regarded columnist, New York Daily News. Good morning, Gary. How are you? What's up, Roger? Same old, same old. I, I read your column, and uh, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it is so time to uh, make this move and at least give Bryce Petty a chance to to, to show what he can do and, and enough for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Do you, and, and you agree with that? Well, I hope I agree with that because I wrote today. No, I know you did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I actually felt when they made the change a couple of weeks ago that they should have just skipped over Geno and gone right to, to Bryce because we know what Geno can do and it's not very much. And then, unfortunately for him, he got hurt. Um, I don't. I don't think they should wait till the season is completely lost before giving Petty a chance. I, I could put him in now and see if he can create a spark because it's just not happening with Fitzpatrick. So they're almost in a situation where they have nothing to lose. They were not going to turn the season around with, with Fitz, and there is a chance that you know Petty can provide the energy to at least make the season respectable. So. I say let them start now rather than waiting till the Jets are three and ten. Yeah, I, I just the, the, this this team what mathematically Gary they're still in it. They got to run the table. I mean they're not doing that. They're just not. And Fitzpatrick's not going to be your guy next year. Geno Smith's not going to be your guy next year. I don't know if Bryce Petty's going to be your guy next year. But you at least have to put him in there and see what he can do. Yeah, I mean they have two kids now that we have no idea if they can play in the league. Um. As I mentioned in my column today, the, the the bad part about how you might think that the Jets feel about Teddy is that after his rookie year, when he doesn't even get a chance to play, they went ahead and drafted another quarterback in the second round. If they thought Teddy was going to be their guy, they, they never would have taken Hackenberg in the second round because that's, that's a really high pick. And um, so from that standpoint, I don't think the Jets are sold at all on Petty, and then the fact that um, they jumped Smith over him um, a couple of weeks ago, and then you know at least going into the season that Smith was going to be the the backup, and then Petty had gotten hurt in the last preseason game anyhow. But uh, so there's a couple of signs here that they don't believe in Petty, um, and then everything I'm hearing about Hackenberg is, you know, initially they thought he was going to be able to compete for the job next year, but he, he's really been bad. Uh, in practice, he was bad in the, in the preseason games that I'm starting to hear now he might be two years away. So uh, it's not a new story in terms of the Jets have been looking for a franchise quarterback for nearly you know, 50 years. Well, here's what diehard Jet fans can hope for. Hope, hope that Ryan Fitzpatrick is not healthy uh -huh. enough to play. That's what, they, that's what you need to hope for right now, that he can't practice, he's not ready, and there's the excuse, Todd Bowles, he's not ready to go, we have no choice, Bryce Petty is, is the starter against the Rams. That's what needs to happen. I, and there is a chance that could happen, and even if Fitz is ready, Bowles can hide behind, well, he's not 100%, I don't want to put him out there, You know, make him more vulnerable to getting hurt even worse. So he's got that opening with the injury there, if he doesn't want to flat out say that, you know, Fitz is being benched. And then depending on how Petty plays um, this weekend against the Rams, if he plays great, then you go ahead and give him, give him a shot. I mean, it's not, you know, a situation like uh, Greg McElroy a few years ago or, you know, a lot of these other guys who have gotten, you know, been one and dones where you knew that they couldn't be the long-term guy. You know, Petty's got a great arm. He's got pretty good size. He's got leadership. Now it's just a question of whether or not he can play at this level. And until you give him a chance, you know, you'll never know. We do know what the Jets have in fits. They're they're three and six. As I pointed out today, you know, Tom Coughlin made the change to Eli at five and four in two thousand four when the season was certainly still alive and they went and lost their first six games. Obviously, the, Jet, the Giants were ready to make a commitment to Eli at that point. You know, Petty's not in the same situation. But I actually think it would, it would really, at least initially, you know, create a spark for the offense. And then whether he'd be able to sustain it or not, you know, would determine whether he's able to play in this league. Gary, I, I heard you in a previous answer say, I don't think they should wait until the season is lost. Is, some folks would tell you now that the season is lost currently. In your estimation, what is the threshold 
uh, for the Jets when they get to the point where it's no longer about wins and losses uh, and it's just about the experimental stage to see what they have moving forward? Well, I mean, his quarterback is really the only position that you would put in that category because just about everybody else plays during the course of the season. The roster is only 46 on game day, and most of the guys get an opportunity to play except the backup quarterbacks unless uh, a guy gets hurt or um, he's not playing well. And that's kind of the situation we're in right now. Is the season lost? You know, realistically, it's probably lost mathematically. It's not. I guess what I'm saying is I would not wait until the season is lost. I wouldn't put him in there, like I mentioned before. I wouldn't first put him in there at 3-10. and 10 Because then the players around him have pretty much given up, and you're not really giving him a fair chance. At 3-6, and six, the likelihood of them making the playoffs is, is, you know, slim to none, obviously. But there is still a chance. I mean, stranger things have happened. Uh, teams starting 0-4 or 0-5, you know, they have made the playoffs before. And if you remember Kansas City, I think they were... Um, they won their last 10 games last year after getting off to a really rotten start. So, you know, it can happen. Now, I don't think the Jets are good enough, but if you're going to look to make a fair judgment on whether Bryce Petty is any good, I think you have to put him in at this point Then, rather than waiting for things to be completely dysfunctional. Um, and, then, and then you really can't judge anybody under those circumstances. Tom with Gary Myers, uh, well-regarded, longtime NFL columnist, New York Daily News, with us here on Big Board Sports. Gary, I'm starting to wonder about the head coach too. I really am. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm starting to have second thoughts on just how good of a head coach Todd Bowles is. Well, I, I can tell you this: he's not very inspiring. No, well, um, yeah, that, that is day. for sure. I mean, he just stands no, there. He stands there, and he's um, he's t- he's terrible with the media. I'm the only one that judges those kinds of things, but I, I just he, he just. I don't know. There's there's no enthusiasm. There's no energy, and his team's playing playing like garbage. To be honest with you, you know the only way I, I really judge him how he is with the media is because you know through us he's getting the message to the fans, and he, he's just you're right. There is no enthusiasm there, and it's just. I mean, his press conferences are all oh, even Eric Mangini's were better. He just, he, he mumbles, he mumbles, Gary. How he even speak. Players, and and I I can't I haven't heard players complain that he um, that he puts them to sleep in meetings or that he's not getting fired up or anything. But I just don't know that he can have a complete personality change when he's with his players, and um, I, I just you know what I haven't been impressed at all. I know they won 10 games last year. They had a really easy schedule, and their quarterback had a career year. But um, I just haven't been impressed by him. And I, I'm not really sure he's the answer going forward. And, you know, one thing to, re- to remember, he was not McCagnin's guy. They pretty much had hired Bowles before they hired McCagnin. And in order to get the job, McCagnin had to sign off on Bowles. I, I, I just don't think from from – just my feel of the situation that if McCagnin was hired first and they put him in charge of hiring the coach, that Bowles would have been his guy, even though, you know, he was one of the hot assistants a, a couple of years ago. Um, I just think that McCagnin was in the league long enough that he would have had his own list. But, you know, pretty much Charlie Castley and Ron Wolf did the hiring for the Jets. And, um, and Bowles played for the Redskins when, when Castle, he was the general manager, and that's that's pretty much how he got the job. Gary Myers, New York Daily News, outstanding job as always. Uh, read your column this morning. It was my thoughts exactly. And that's why I told our, our producer, Zachary Bike, let's get Gary on for a few minutes because I, I think you're 100% right on. It is Bryce Petty time, regardless of what's going on with the injury to Fitzpatrick. If, he, if he's healthy, it doesn't make any difference. Is This needs to be Bryce Petty this week against the Rams and moving forward. Season is over, no doubt. Gary, thanks for a few minutes. All right, take care, guys. Have you a great got, day. You too, man. Gary Myers, New York Daily News columnist.